Hello and welcome to Alina's Alchemy. For those new here, this is Alina. I'm an intuitive, I'm an energy healer and a meditation coach. And today I want to talk to you about why you keep thinking about them and what to do. Now, this video is specifically for people who have exited a relationship or an arrangement or have removed themselves or someone else was removed, chose to remove themselves and you find yourself constantly ruminating from an energetic perspective from my perspective as an energy healer first of all there's nothing wrong with that happening other of course than the fact that it's very annoying and probably you are here in this video because you want to find out if and how you can stop having these people in your head it could also be that the people you're thinking about is not just one person it's a lot of people it can be a romantic partner it can be a friend group it can be one friend ten friends it can be someone from the working place where something happened between you there was a fight there was whatever and I want to say the following there is something called social anxiety a lot of people do have that a lot of people will keep on rehashing in their heads even very simple interactions let's say crossing the street and saying good morning to someone or stopping to open the door for someone and you keep on like you re-examine even the way you said oh please or the way you said thank you or whatever you keep on replaying it in your head and you're like was that too much did i speak too loud was it weird did i speak too fast did i speak like way too early did they want to speak did i interrupt them this is typical social anxiety this does come from relational trauma usually in our upbringing when we've been criticized so much about what we did or didn't do and this can result in us feeling like we need to monitor and examine and pick apart and analyze every little move we did for the occasion that what we did was not acceptable so that we can step in and course correct this comes from having obviously grown up in environments or spent time in environments where your role was turned into the role of a person upon whom the responsibility for other people's emotions was placed now that's not healthy that's not good if that's you i'm sorry that this happened to you and i would recommend the work of dr ramani even here on uh, youtube or the work of Dr. Lisa Romano. I feel like it is imperative that we step into a place of empowerment in terms of like understanding how the ways that we are now maybe driving ourselves crazy, how this is nothing but a behavior we developed after being psychologically tortured basically some of us maybe didn't have to deal with that in childhood but entered a relationship with people who were imposing all of these things on us and so we come out of these relationships very much confused very much broken but now i'm talking really about you had a fight you had a disagreement you broke up with someone you exited from someone's life or someone exited from your life and you can't stop thinking of them the reason this is often happening is because your mind of course is trying to understand what happened is trying to analyze what occurred we're trying to find resolution and so often this is happening with cases where we didn't get to have closure either because we had to just get out run while it was still early or run and disappear because the person was abusive or was crazy and we were like i'm sorry but i have to place distance between me and you it could be that someone left you and you feel heartbroken and you don't understand how could it be that one day they were completely in love with you and the next day they were perfectly fine with you guys going separate ways none of these cases are characterized by award-winning honesty and so the mind is trying to understand what happened is trying to pick it apart and see where did we get it wrong what what happened and so 
what happens in these cases from an energetic perspective as always i'm not a therapist uh, i'm not a psychologist from an energetic perspective what happens is everybody we are in a relationship with we do develop energetic cords with them now we don't have energetic cords with the girl working at the bakery where we just say hi once every morning when we get our coffee and then off to do our business we establish cords with people who have been important to us people we have been in close proximity with for a good chunk of time and we have interacted and interfaced with one another and we have emerged in the sense that we either liked or disliked one another but we had to deal with one another so partners family members friends it goes without saying we are corded with all of these people and let's say after a while the relationship came to an end there's been distance now between you two maybe you are in one place they are in another place maybe you don't even talk nevertheless the connection is still there the etheric and energetic cords are still intact and through these cords it's how frequency, energies, emotions, thoughts are going back and forth. It could even be that you don't even want the person to come back, but you keep having thoughts. What often happens is you could have a cord from, let's say, the crown or the third eye or anywhere in the head or in the heart. So then you have an emotional response. You're, Let's say you're sitting there and you're suddenly overwhelmed by an emotional response and now you are thinking about them again or you're just sitting there doing something else and suddenly you are hit with a thought or a memory or something that they said at another time or something that you could be having discussions with them in your head that's a great sign of energetic enmeshment that needs to be snip snip go 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 away if you catch yourself having discussions imaginary discussions in your head with people where you would say this and then they would say this but then you would respond that um in this moment stop and say i am god i am sovereign and i am free and place your hands over your heart center back into the heart okay get away from the mental space go back into the heart if you want even use the breath go do some intense breathing for a while or do some very light breathing if your nervous system can't deal with intense breathing right now do some very simple cycles of place place your tongue the tip of your tongue behind your two front teeth like saying N, like nicholas take a breath in at the count of three hold for three and then release and the exhale make it long as long as you can and do let's say six times such a cycle and then go ahead and say i am god i am sovereign i am free and i speak a blessing over them name name their name and i speak a blessing over me and i set them free and i set myself free now it's important that you are stopping it at its tracks every time it happens so you can do cord cuttings you can do there's a lot of cord cutting rituals that's why i'm just gonna mention it here and i'm not gonna go into details about how to do a cord cutting but i might do another video about how to do cord cutting but there's so many different videos on youtube because every practitioner does it a little differently or you can go to an energy healer and be like hey clear the heck out of me <laughs> i remember i had a client who the cord with her ex-girlfriend was in the sacral and and in the root chakra and she was like i don't even think of her i just feel her or i have body sensation memories from when we were making love to each other so when we are making love with people we cord ourselves in all sorts of ways so that's also pretty normal okay you can use crystals to do cord cuttings i like to cut cords with black uh, kyanite blue kyanite uh, obsidian mm, black tourmaline and then shielding and closing anything in the aura on top with selenite but yes as i said there are so many different ways to do cord cutting rituals 
you can burn a thread and you know sever the connection there's so many different ways also lisa Rene at energeticsynthesis.com has a product called i think uh, relationship dissolution or something like that where it is a bundle with two different meditations and a journaling exercise this is the most effective cord cutting that i have ever encountered but i'm going to move on now from the cord cutting and say that you do want to stop the playing the tape playing in your head you do want to stop it at its tracks so find a visual find a mental picture that elevates you brings you joy or takes you in an entirely different space for example i like thinking of hibiscus flowers or think of an ocean the ocean yes you could be imagining it also but it does even have a different energetic statement because of the salt in the water it's very cleansing so even if you're imagining if you're thinking like this ocean or whales or so something that really brings forth a very pure frequency and vibration change the mental picture where you're catching yourself having these mental discussions with them stop the picture by like really trump that by suddenly visualizing picturing i don't know, like a big majestic humpback whale floating and and hear hear their sounds or see the hibiscus flower opening up and there's little rain droplets on its petals and it's shaking a little bit against the wind so go ahead and completely trump that energy with a new picture and really really focus 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 it's always gonna be pulling you back please know that because often what's happening you know with relationships it's a give and take we give energy we receive energy some relationships they are vampiric we are the only ones who are giving and these are the most difficult ones also because once you have let's say removed yourself from the relationship the person now is lacking uh, supply energetic supply emotional support uh, reliance uh, supply all sorts of stuff, financial supply you name it and unconsciously people without re even realizing that this is what they're doing they're trying their soul their energy is reaching through to try to reestablish some kind of connection and so that's why also when you when you're cutting cords we often say don't pick up the phone after you're doing cord cutting rituals the phone is always going to ring not just with that particular person but with all sorts of people from the past with whom now maybe through your ritual you cut cords and now they unconsciously they feel the energy supply having been cut and they're reaching out to try to pull you back in to try to re-establish that connection because they have been feeding from you so this is not something that i encourage allowing like such siphoning of energy so that a lot of people are talking about cord cutting being dangerous i never had the experience of cord cutting being dangerous but i have made the experience of allowing energy siphoning to your detriment to take place yes this is dangerous in the long run also it can result in all sorts of things even down to illness i know it happened to me so you want to really disrupt the mental or emotional the tape every time it starts playing so go ahead and think of something else even a rose a rose is also very high vibrational or work with um, scents like essential oils have something very strong even something like a scent that you dislike I, I don't like very much patchouli so I'm gonna put it in my hands that's Jasmine I love Jasmine but I'm gonna put it in my hands the patchouli and every time this thing is coming back I'm gonna go oh god it's it brings you back in the here and the now cold exposure like go throw some cold water in your face when this is happening bottom line anything disrupt the signal disrupt the connection because in this moment it has um made contact and it's siphoning from you so disrupt it 
if you can, any way that you can, starve the connection, stop feeding them. Hypnosis, also I wanna say for the long run, if you see that in the long run you still are being challenged, hypnosis, the Simpson protocol specifically, find a psychotherapist who specializes also in hypnosis, cleanse your energy with white sage, have a salt bath with the intention to cut cords and with that person and disengage their energy. Also, if it is getting really bad and if you are feeling some kind of, let's say, even psychic attack from the person, let's say you feel the person's anger directed at you, maybe for terminating the relationship or walking away or whatever, going no contact, not picking up the phone or whatever else they might have in their heads. If you feel these anger spears, as we say, these negative thought forms, I have found that it's a great little trick to write their name and if you have their birth date also write it on a piece of paper and write if they're sending anything negative my way make it freeze and stay away from me and you fold the piece of paper you fold it away from you okay if that's your paper you fold it away from you okay and you take any kind of a thread but I like a red one and you tie it around it and you say I tie the energy to be to stay away from me I bind the energy to be away from me and then you take this little bundle and you throw it in your freezer all the way far back in your freezer and leave it there don't touch it Generally, with people who are annoying you or pestering you, throw them in the freezer. You guys, it freezes the energy. <laughs> I kid you not. It freezes the energy and it even... You understand this is like a little ritual. This is something you do with intention. So spirit is at work here, right? Where intention is put, right? So don't do it with anger or anything, but do it just... As neutrally as possible but knowing having the intention that you know what I don't want this issue annoying me anymore and throw it in the freezer it freezes the energy and it even results so often as I have seen in these people suddenly like getting busy with all sorts of other things and no longer like thinking about you no longer obsessing over you and you start to see the energy really like dissipating and you're like Whew, i can tell they're not thinking about me anymore <laughs> if they're sending evil eye or ill wish your way now again i'm gonna go to lisa Rene from energeticsynthesis.com you guys i talk a lot about this woman but that's because i have learned through the years so much through her i don't want to vouch for anyone on here on my channel because i have in the past spoken very highly of certain people and they turned out to be n not what i appreciated in the end but i do want to honor my mentors in the sense that i do want to honor the people that i have learned from and yes in this sense uh, Lisa Rene has some really wonderful tools and something that she is teaching often about is the ban of non-interference. Uh, if you can google it so that I don't waste too much time here explaining what it is but very briefly and you can go to her website energeticsynthesis.com and write ban of non-interference so i'm gonna try to put some link in the description so that you don't have to go looking too much but okay you are placing you're asking the divine to place a ban over that particular person that ban is for that person to no longer be messing with you your energy and your path or anything you want to get ahead with doing. Prayer and petition, as always, for me, Archangel Michael will always be a staple where I'm asking, please protect my energy, cut any connection with that person, speak to your angels and say, I feel their energy. I'm constantly having discussions in my mind with them. Please clear that. Please shield me from that. Shield me with your sword and your shield, Archangel Michael. Uh, please shield my energy do not let this in and I have seen also that Archangel Hamuel is a great ally when it comes to people being obsessed with let's say your 
relationships. It could be people talking or obsessing or gossiping about, let's say, your relationship with your lover or a friendship you have. Pray to Archangel Hamuel and Michael and say, please give them something else to be occupied with. Please protect my relationship, my love, my friendship, whatever it is. Please protect my soft soul. I don't want my soul to harden up. Please protect my heart, protect my light and give them something else to be obsessing over. Give them something else to be busy with. Prayer is so important here, you guys. This is an excellent opportunity to assert our spiritual power and to say no i do not allow you to be in my energy field so ask your angels or decree it or say i rebuke this energy in the name of the christ i'm god i'm sovereign i'm free i do not accept this this is a trespassing of my space ask your angels ask that these energies that these people that they be out of your field and really in the end close it always with i speak a blessing over them and i speak a blessing over me and i set them free and i set myself free keep on repeating these things at some point it's going to dissolve because you have to consider how much time have you spent with these people how close you were how powerful your bond was so it can take a while for this connection to dissolve also get rid of anything they might have gifted you and you are still holding in your space these are things that you could be seeing and they could be reminding you of the person anew this can be a jewelry this can be something that you guys bought together somewhere either give it to someone else or bury it or throw it in a river or throw it away altogether if it's something that you can't get rid of it because it's too big or it was too expensive and getting rid of it would inconvenience you let's say a huge couch or whatever then get your white sage bundle and go about cleansing it ritualistically clean everything even underneath that object sage the heck out of it and speak blessings and speak your own authority over it keep stating it this object is mine i place my ownership and my authority over it i remember at some point i was so shocked to find in my jewelry case a piece of jewelry that an ex-partner of mine had gifted me over 15 years ago and i have no idea how it kept on being in my stuff i guess when i left my mother country i took it with me because i had such a lack consciousness i thought that i would need it it was so liberating to just go and give it to a pawn shop exchange it for money and with that money i went and i did something nice for some homeless people so the energy was transmuted nature spending time in nature to ground yourself and working with breath work can also help move your energy in such a manner that it like rejuvenates the energy it moves out of your system any stagnant energy it kind of does like an up update so these people are now out of your life so when your energy updates uh, the connection gets updated it's like oh it's severed it's no longer something that we entertain and now i want to talk about sound because as i said when you're catching such things happening where you're having like these things or these people or what happened or what could have happened or what would you say uh, being in your head all the time you want to disrupt the signal loud music don't go ahead playing some sad breakup songs now okay and I'll play something else something that takes you in a completely different space or brain waves alpha brain waves 9.5 to 10.6 and finally i want to speak to your ability for self-healing we all have the ability for self-healing and i want you to get comfortable with using your hands we are going to use the principles of the feminine side of the body and the masculine side of the body the feminine in the left side is the receptive one and the masculine on the right side is the one that can give so we are going to first of all make an invocation pray to your angels say i request a uh, healing energy to run through me as is appropriate at this time for my own self-healing and go ahead hold out your left hand or place a crystal or an object of power 
to draw power from. You can rub your hands together a little bit before. You can use some essential oils, anything to ramp up your energy a little bit, center in your breath, and then go ahead and use your right hand to go over places where you feel the connection is where do you feel it is it like is it thoughts then go for the head is it emotions go for your heart do you feel the emotions let's say in your stomach does it give you anxiety whatever go go for the stomach go anywhere where you feel because the energy might start moving around also as you do that so go every anywhere and start either pulling and visualize that and say maybe even that i open a vortex of energy let's say here on the right side of the room for low vibrational energies to exit from in there and go ahead and pull energies and throw them into that vortex or or heal just just through infusing energy but what i like to do is really taking scooping the energy throwing it away scooping the energy throwing it away protective crystals you guys are going to be good allies during these days black obsidian is my all-time favorite but also black tourmaline combined with citrine and rutilated quartz this is a wonderful combination rutilated quartz and and citrine they are very light energy so if anybody's sending anything stinky your way or their negative projections what they think about you what a terrible person they think you are this light energy dispels this darkness and supports also your own light in not getting diminished by the attacks of the projections of other people you understand now that the reason why you can't stop thinking of them is because there is this energetic connection i would really try all of these especially i would start with the cord cutting and then i would use all of the other things connection needs to be severed usually distance will do it after a while 21 days is always a tipping point of energy 21 days it takes for energy to shift but as i said depending on how intense your relationship was or maybe it is like family members if it's like a mother child uh relationship for example like mother child we were even on a physical level connected with a cord so these things might take a lot of time mother child i don't even know if this connection ever gets truly severed but we can mitigate let's say whatever damage or whatever harassment by entertaining that energy as less as possible and the key is in disrupting the signal disrupt it right in this moment say say something it's like don't don't just passively let it run in the background while you're you know doing your chores around the house don't stop where you're doing even use your hands do something that signifies no stay out or just do something you need something to disrupt it say i rebuke this energy i do not accept it i do not come into any agreement with it i do not accept any dialogue with you also you can go in the astral uh not anything extraordinary but in your meditation you can speak to the higher self of that person if the person has a higher self and they are not a person that has been completely infiltrated so you can speak to your angels you can speak to their angels and say please understand that i'm doing this for the best interest of all of us that i am splitting from their energy i am separating from this energy i speak a blessing over you leave my space you are not allowed in here you're not wanted anymore keep affirming and stating your boundaries another thing that i like to do is writing the name of a person and either throwing it into the river and asking the river please take them away from me take this issue away from me take their energy away from me and actually usually it works for me very very well all i have to do is just drop something or someone in the river not someone but you know their name on a paper drop them in the river and just watch them go away and say as this floats away so does your energy 
is removed from my life. Also with people who tried to drive you crazy or engaged in crazy making, it's very important that you have clear in your head your own version of events. For what it's worth, write a letter, write an email to yourself or write it down in your journal, write an account of the events that happened. It's so important to honor your version of events, especially if you had people who did things and now you are leaving, let's say, and they are attacking you, they're angry at you for leaving because they don't understand why would you leave. And when you confront them for their shortcomings, they're gonna be like, no, that's not what happened, or they will start blaming it all on you. So it's important that you have in your head processed and chewed on what actually happened and have that on record. Guys, people with narcissistic personalities can mess with our sense of sanity. This is important for us that we know what the story is because differently our mind will keep even more going back, rehashing the events, trying to understand, did it happen this way or did it happen that way that this person is saying it happened? But what about that? But what about that? But it can't be the way they are saying it because I have proof that this happened. But if this happened, why are they saying this? So we need to help ourselves with stopping to do this ping pong, this back and forth. So write down the story as it happened. One time for you to have it in your archive. And then that's it, out of your mind. All right, my loves, I hope this video helped give some tools and I wish you all the very best, much strength and know that you got this. You are an alchemist. Have a good one. Goodbye for now.